Okay, rule number six. This rule states an emotionally induced symptom produces organic change when persisted in long enough. <sighs> okay, let's wrap our heads around this one. And emotionally, so we know what emotions are, induced symptoms that goes along with our rule number one, every thought or idea has a corresponding physical reaction. So an emotionally induced symptom produces organic change. So not an in, or a one-time organic response. It creates a change when persisted in long enough. The one that I like best for this one to explain is the way Joe Dispenza talks about it. And that's with, uh, I don't, I don't remember exactly how, so I'm paraphrasing here and I'm going to interject my own ideas and, and examples. If you're driving to work and you feel great, you're like all is swell and your world is amazing. You've got this new job and whatever, and somebody cuts you off and you're, you want to be there. It's a new job. So you want to be there on time and, and this is frustrating. So you have that first initial frustrating thing. And what's your reaction? Your reaction could be all kinds of things, but let's just pretend your reaction is angry. You feel angry. Anger comes up in the moment because they are rude. They cut you off. You had to slam on your brakes. You could have been in an accident. What will that mean? And then you have to, now you're in this this um, fight or flight response without your permission, your body just does it because you might be an accident. So then you get to work and it, what was just an initial reaction and response a moment. Now you get to work and then you go around the water cooler, I think is what he talks about. And now you're talking about it with everybody two hours later. Can you believe this guy? And I can't believe and this and that. So you pull up the emotion again, that response, that response, let's just say that for you, the, the physical response is tightening in your shoulders. Okay. When you get angry, you go, Arr. all right. So now that's happening again. You don't even have to think about it. It's automatic. Your body responds. Arr. And then so now you're in a mood. Now you're grumpy. You're going about your day and you're grumpy. And now because you're grumpy, you're starting to notice everything that's going to kick off that anger again. So if this goes persists over time, it becomes a habit. And if it persists even longer, it becomes your personality. So how many people have heard, um, yeah, Joe's just an angry guy or, you know, David, he's so sweet. He's just a sweet guy. We, we like to label or put tags on people when that's not actually true. They're, they're, their individual essence, but the emotion that they choose to put on and wear is that, that habitual one. So over time that can turn into a physical response, just like the other rules that, that will, you'll need to see a massage therapist, or maybe the muscles will push your neck out of place. Now you need to see a chiropractor. You need to do yoga or whatever the case may be. So just keep in mind, that's what that rule means. You may have one reaction, one sensitizing event, but over time, if you continue in that pattern, it becomes a habit and then a personality trait. So think about your personality traits, which ones are doing well for you, which ones are helping you move forward or succeed in life, which ones would you really like to throw out the window? If you have a personality trait that you'd like to get rid of, it's time to do some work around it. Start journaling, start thinking, get into that calm hypnotic state. When's the first time I remember feeling this way? See if something comes up and then see if that was the best way to react. Was there another way? Is there something you can start interjecting? And some at the beginning, it 
feels difficult because once we have a habit and a pattern habitual, it's hard to switch shift gears to another, you know, you're on this track. It's the groove is really deep in our brain. So it's, it's harder to shift off to this other completely opposite feeling. But if you can catch it, and that's why this awareness piece is so, so important. Are you guys still being aware of your surroundings, aware of what's coming in and out and how you're feeling? That awareness factor is key. That's the first step because that's where when there's awareness, you can send in an interrupt. Interrupt and quite honestly tell yourself, stop it. That's not the way I want to react and choose a different way until that way is stronger. So if this groove is super strong and you interrupt it and go off on this course, this might not be very strong yet, but the more times you ride this road, go over this path, that groove will get stronger and this one will disintegrate or it will be overgrown with other things. So that's what that rule is all about. Try it on, take a look at your life, see how it applies to you. And if you feel like it, let us know in the comments what is some a personality trait that you most love about yourself i want to know what have you done on a loop that's helpful for you for your family for the world